Uh, hello, YouTube back once again, and tonight I saw the new biopic Love and Mercy, and, uh, this biopic, it's not about the, it's not a biopic about the Beach Boys, uh, as a band, it's a biopic about their main member, uh, Brian Wilson, and, uh, it's set between two time periods, uh, one when he's trying to make the album smile, and his slow descent to madness trying to do it, and, uh, and after he basically hit rock bottom, and, like, he was almost committed suicide, and, like, hit him when he was trying to mentally recover cover and the time when he and at the time he meets his eventual second wife uh melinda ledbetter and and the relationship they build with one another and uh so yeah uh let's talk about this one uh first the good um the good paul uh the all three leads are just wonderful uh starting with paul dana who plays the young uh brian wilson uh he is he uh paul dana what a weird career this guy's had um i love i love paul dana i loved him a little bit sunshine as the mute brother uh he was f unbelievable in There Will Be Blood. I found that one of the hugest Oscar snubs of all time. They did not give him a Best Supporting Actor uh, uh, um, nod for his performance in that because he was fantastic in that. And he is just as wonderful in this movie. He is. It's so interesting because, like I said, like the, uh, Brian Wilson, he is schizophrenic. Like, and he, it, 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 this is the time when he started like his schizophrenia. Like first, like started. Um, started, like, uh, uh, coming out, uh, he started, like, having schizophrenia, and, um, this, or realizing it, at least, and, uh, this, the, this, uh, this, uh, he did a great job at just being, like, just a man who would just be, like, his descent to madness, it was really interesting, because he, he was really likable, like, he was a really, it was really nice seeing this guy, just, like, this really happy-go-lucky optimist who, like, who believed, like, he could beat out the Beatles, and, like, we, he could just be, be, he could just break his band while the all-time greats. It's just so nice to see this, like, really great optimist, even though he is really weird. He's a weird guy. He just keeps, he has, like, these weird moods. Like, he keeps, like, his, like, recording, like, when he's in the recording series, like, all, like, the unorthodox things he likes to do for, uh, music, uh, and, um... And, uh, yeah, he was an odd guy, but he was just really likable, well, just, like, because he was just super, like, polite and charming, and he was just such a, like I said, such a nice, happy-go-lucky optimist that he was really likable character, and you were really sad seeing his, de his descent into madness, essentially, as, like, the part of the scenes in the past keep, uh, go on, and, uh, and, um... So that he was great in that, and um, that, and I also like the fact I like the fact that they did they did acknowledge the fact that he was not the easiest guy to work with, not just because the fact he was pretty weird and kind of crazy. Uh, he th they did acknowledge the fact that he was kind of a perfectionist. Like I love this scene, like when just one of the members of his band of the Beach Boys just start getting just incredibly pissed off, just like just pissed off, just on the grounds that um. Just like basically, there's just like how much of perfection is he is, how he makes like just like uh, the cello players like just do the same like notes like again and again for like three hours. Like, I, I do enjoy that. I am glad they acknowledge the fact, even though he was a nice, charming man, he was a kind, he could be a pain to work with. They, he, they did acknowledge according to people, he could be a pain to work with from time to time, and, uh, that, uh, it, it was really just sad, just seeing him, just seeing how, like, it was, especially when he got more crazy when you just learned, like, all he wanted was the, like, approval of his father, who he had a crappy relationship with, so, uh, Paul Dano, fantastic job. Also, uh, also playing Brian Wilson in, uh, what's, I, what's supposed to be, pre I think, present day in this film, or the future, whatever I'll say. Uh, John Cusack, uh, John Cusack, uh, hasn't done anything good in a while, and it's a shame. I really like John Cusack, uh, yeah, he's just mainly done, been doing a lot of crappy films. It's nice to see him back in top form in this film. Uh, I heard some people did not like, uh, John Cusack and just said, like, he did not hold a candle to Paul Dano. I, uh, strongly disagree with that, because, like, I would say Paul Dano, it's a much more flashy role, like, it's, like, it, it, he basically, because it's Paul Dano plays the Brian Wilson like during like the height of the Beach Boys popularity, and because of that, like Paul Dano got to be a bit more flashy. Like he got to do more like a lot. Like he got to do like a lot of like over the top singing and be like have like a bit over the top and like insane. Like he's he's like he's on drugs. Like he's like kind of high. Like a good part of the movie. Like John Cusack though, it's intro, like it's supposed to be kind of just being like a man like after they cracked and like basically just like kind of recovering. Like he is incredible. Like well like uh, well. 
while Paul Dino just came off kind of like as slightly kind of awkward, just a bit unorthodox. Like John Cusack comes off as much more weird and just like much more like it was just uh, like have uh, he's just that you're just an odd guy, aren't you? Like, but he was also but he was also really likable. He was a very sad, it was very sad seeing this man just being like so like basically just so sad and basically basically just completely like just drugged up like trying like trying to like deal with like all his like mental illnesses and all that just basically just being so mentally damaged it was he was uh, all again really likable and really charming like and like you just saw like he was just an odd guy who was kind of crazy and it was sad because he and so that uh, so, uh, that, like, and I also, I, like, I love, like, how, like, he did show you, like, how he was just based, how, like, how, one of my favorite things to show you is crazy, like, basically, anytime you know, it's like, anytime he's, like, walking around, you can see his, like, this nervous hand twitch, how his hand just keeps twitching, like, he's just always, like, completely nervous, and, like, he, like, 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 he is a schizophrenic, like, um, it was... Just very so, he was just a very sad, heartbreaking character. Just seeing like how much this man's fallen from like the happy go lucky optimist you saw with Paul Dano. Uh, and finally, for the final lead, uh, Elizabeth Banks as uh, Melinda Ledbetter, um, uh, Brian Wilson's eventual second wife. Uh, the first scene she's in is the two of them meeting. She was a car salesman and she came one in to buy a car with her. Elizabeth Banks, uh, really like Elizabeth Banks, uh, for some of her more uh, current, um, acknowledgments uh, I could think of uh she was wild she was the voice of wild style in the Lego movie and she's Effie in the Hunger Games movies uh I really like Elizabeth Banks she is fantastic she you know, completely holds her own against everyone uh, all like the the both brilliant performances from Paul Dano and John Cusack in this film she's just so likable and just always so nice because she 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 essentially does like John Cusack like he's basically somewhat being like um tortured by his doctor psychiatrist like basically just being kind of like completely drugged and like somewhat somewhat miserable but he, and Elizabeth Banks does essentially does save him like it does like become his savior and it's just it's just such it's just really heartwarming she is just basically the just plays the nicest woman in this movie and you're just you just feel you're just like this character so much Elizabeth Bl Banks just plays it beautifully just being so charming so likable just like you, you, she clearly comes off she plays it she does it does come off that she really does care about this guy no matter how weird and crazy he is like she does have feelings for Brian Wilson, like, it, it, she is just wonderful and just so likable, you want to see, you just love, every moment, you, anytime she was on screen, you could always just see, like, how John Cusack would just, because only just, you could, always have the feeling was just, like, that much happier to see her, and you just felt happier to see John Cusack happier, because he is, it's, it's sad to see that man like that, just so sad and miserable, so... All three leads, A plus performance is wonderful, just wonderful from beginning to end. Uh, other gets from this movie, uh, the cinematography, uh, beautiful cinematography in this film. Uh, I, I really like, I really like the contrast of cinematography because like anytime they're like in the recording studio, like basically. Anytime you see the band in the recording studio or just Brian Wilson, uh, it's interesting because like it's shot, it's shot how do I describe it? It's shot like The Office, like it's it shot like with like a third person cameraman that people can see, but like they don't like speak to or really acknowledge. Like they can, they'll look at it sometimes, but that's about it. Like, and it, it, it is good. Like I really like it because you, you do feel like you are just sitting in on that recording studio, studio just watching what's going on there. And it is a really inter interesting contrast because then anytime you're outside. Uh, the recording studio, you just it just shot like a no, it just shot like a movie. Still some wonderful shots, uh, wonderful beach shots and uh, <laughs> beach boys. But uh, yeah, wonderful beach beach shots and uh, it, and um, so and uh, but yeah, that that part shot like a movie and it is just an interesting contrast, like how you basically in the. Uh, recording studio you're basically like it'll feel like an observer like sitting in on it and just outside you just feel like you're just watching the movie of like the biopic and i really thought that was interesting that and uh, i really like the film great effect i really liked how they basically recreated like a lot of the beach boys like more famous like videos and like uh music videos and like i thought they did they did a great job at making this look like it was from like a, what was it the 60s some somewhat sometime around there um so cinematography was great uh I also enjoyed the fact that they did not just show that this was the Beach Boys like it's not like it was not like the Beach Boys were successful then they just fell into oblivion like over like night now like I like how this show like this had they had their ups and downs not critically like they're all, always critical darlings I know like the but it showed that um they had some financial 
ups and downs like some of their albums like were a bit ahead of their time like and i know that for some of the like one of their albums that they talk about like the british chase like one of those like brilliant albums like of all time that would did not do very financially well so i really like how it wasn't just about a band like who just basically plummeted and now this was a band who just had its ups and downs like most bands and uh that uh the script was great uh it because in the because at the heart of the script it was basically for like for like um the Paul Dano's part, it was like, it was a very nice story of basically, like, a, basically a man who was, like, somewhat a bit of a, a bit ahead of his time, like, somewhat, like, of an unrecognized genius, a misunderstood genius, and, like, just basically, ju just, like, basically just trying his hardest, uh, just trying his hardest every day, and just trying to do what he really wants to do, like, just giving it 110%, but just sometimes it just doesn't work out at the moment, just seeing, like, how it can take a mental t uh, deterioration on this person. Well, like, so it, like, it's so, I'd, like, Paul, like, the Paul Daniels kind of parts are kind of, like, a tragedy. Uh, the John Cusack parts are more kind of, like, a heart, uh, like, an uplifting, like, kind of, like, uh, a more of an uplifting, heartwarming story on what, on basically, because, like, at its heart, it's kind of like a love, it, 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 at its heart, it's both a love story between him and Elizabeth Banks, and, like, the fact that Elizabeth Banks does essentially become his savior, like I said, and, like, also a story of, like, letting go, how he has just, has to just, like, let go of his past and move on, like, um, so, yeah, like, I, I do, I did really like the contrast, I liked how, like, basically the Paul Dano play parts, like I said, water tragedy, the John Cusack parts were more, more like an uplifting, like, love story, so, uh, heartwarming and uplifting love story, so, I, I, the script was really great, uh, that, um, uh, that, and for the fact this film was pretty dark, like, it was a pretty dark film just for the main character was just so mentally unstable, this film could be really funny at parts, uh, but definitely, uh, they took advantage of how weird of a guy Brian Wilson could be and led to some really darkly hilarious scenes, like, I, I love the scene, like, when he's first, um, when he when he's uh for the when he's for the first John Cusack scene when he's first at the, when he's at the car dealership where he first meets Elizabeth Banks and then the, she's just trying to sell him a car and they're just saying and then he's just like I want this car and then she's like okay I can get you this car and just like no I want this specific one she's like you want the showroom car yes I want this car and she's just like okay so, uh, like like there are just a lot of really they do take advantage of how brian wilson is kind of a weird guy and that does lead to a lot of fun black comedy so uh that was wonderful and finally this film did have a wonderful so soundtrack it's the beach boys song is like let's go surfing now um um uh, or, or was it called surf or is it surfing the usa one of the two and uh god only knows um all that all the music was really great in this film so uh now so uh, all the parts main parts scripts acting uh script acting contrast cinematography just all wonderful let's talk about the bad though there are a few bads one um one, this plot, the movie did a good job at not being a bit too manipulative and preachy of a biopic. There did come to, there were two errors, though. One was, uh, it came a bit too much of the misunderstood genius plot, like, at one point, like, probably the biggest one, there's just a scene between Paul Dano and his dad, and he's, and his dad's just, like, basically just says, like, the typical, like, you guys are just a fad, you will amount to nothing, like, you will be forgotten, like, and Paul Dano just, like, no, but I love this. It's all I I, I try. I don't want to be forgotten. Forgotten. It was kind of just like, yeah, I've seen this before. This felt that felt very manipulative. Let's the hugest offender for being manipulative though was Paul Giamatti. Oh god, uh, I love Paul Giamatti. Wonderful actor. I love Paul Giamatti. And anytime I anything I see him in, they'll, it, he plays uh, he plays uh, John Cusack psychiatrist in this film, I forget what the guy's name is, and my, and uh, the person that Elizabeth Banks saves him from, and my issue is he came off as way too cartoony in this like, at first, like, at first, like, it was good like, he started off as likable, like, he seemed kind of like, odd, because essentially the story is like he was a very unorthodox doctor slash psychiatrist to uh, Brian Wilson, and like he basically did just start doing what's concerned some very, very unorthodox, very unorthodox things to this man, and uh, started like manipulating him and um, started manipulating him and things like that. And uh, my issue though is, is so like he started off as like a like he started like he started off as likable, which I thought was good, but like kind of like weird and un slightly unpleasant and like. If they kept going with that route, like, I think it would have worked. The problem is they make him way too cartoony, cartoony evil. Like, there was literally a scene, like, basically when, like, 
uh, John Cusack like call uh, calls up like Elizabeth Banks after he's been to- like, John Cusack's told like he can't see her anymore by Paul Giamatti, and then like Elizabeth Banks goes to see uh, John Cusack and she he's at the recording studio and he's just like on the floor and he starts like bursting into tears in front of her just saying like I'm just so miserable and then she's like no it's okay and she's just like okay just come with me like I, like I'll bring you I'll bring you someplace I'll I'll bring you someplace better and then like and then like Paul Giamatti just like he's been, you just hear Paul Gi- Gi- Giamatti's voice just like, hello there, and then he rises, you just see Giamatti just standing in like the office room like, <sighs> and you're just like, oh my god, this is so stupid, like it does come off like an over the top cartoon at that point, I'm just like, this is too cartoony right here, this is too stupid, like, that, and they didn't, like, even acknowledge the fact, like, they slightly did, they didn't really acknowledge the fact that this man did, like, even if he did do bad things, it was very unorthodox that Brian Wilson, he did save Brian Wilson's life, like, he did keep this guy from committing suicide when he hit rock bottom, and, like, they slightly acknowledge that, they don't really, like, like, it's not, like, but, like, this would have worked better if, like, you could have said, well, it's not right what he's doing, but, like, you could kind of understand why he would think he would need to do that, like, while, like, you could kind of, like, understand what he's thinking, even if, even if you did not agree, even if you don't agree with it, like, no, like, he, he was basically just a cartoon bad guy, like, it even ends with, like, when, like, Eliz- uh, Elizabeth Banks, like, um, is able to, like, to get, like, a court order against him, like, to get him, like, banned from seeing Brian Wilson again. He's just like, you slut! You dirty slut! I'm just like, this This is really stupid. This is really, really stupid and over the top. So, that is the one, that was the major part when this became really manipulative and just got, like, it, like, it felt like they just threw him in because they needed a bad guy. And I'm just like, oh god, movies. You, you didn't need that. But, like, but besides that, this movie was still was fantastic. So, for final rating, uh, this was a tough one for me for a final score. But I'm gonna give Love and Mercy a very strong four and a half out of five. I really did love this movie and thought it was fantastic. If Brian, if 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 Paul Giamatti was if he wasn't written so over the top, I would have given this movie a five. That is the one thing that kept me away from. It pissed me off just enough that I couldn't give this movie a five. I felt like it would be more than nitpicking, saying that like saying that Paul Giamatti annoyed me. It, it went too far. If it wasn't for him, I would give this movie a five. But all I can say is, go see this. If you like biopics, see this movie. It is a wonderful, wonderful biopic. Better than most biopics I saw last year. Um, and last year was there were so many biopics last year. And uh, yeah, so go see Love and Mercy. If you like the Beach Boys, you like music, you, like, you want to see a good biopic, um, go see it. YouTube, as always, please subscribe. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.